Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Race Whoop 25, a very durable 2.5 inch quadcopter which is built like a tank and is a result of a cooperation between AJLRC and Frizzillion, a very creative guy who is behind this original design. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, give you my feedback after testing it out and show you some flight footage. In terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the RaceHoop 25, you can find a spare set of HQ Prop 6 bladed 63mm propellers, some stickers, two high quality battery velcro straps, some spare screws, the wiring diagram of the Zeus F722 mini flight controller, and a hex key driver, a screw, and nuts that will enable you to mount an action camera on the top of the quadcopter. In terms of features and specs, First of all, just like pretty much most of the Binance Fly quadcopters by AGLRC, the RaceWoop 25 is available with multiple radio receiver options and in both analog and digital versions. I'm testing in this video the analog version, which is bundled with the Cadix Rattel 2 micro-sized FPV camera and the AGLRC Zeus Nano VTX, and the digital version is bundled with the new Cadix Polar digital transmission system. In addition, the RaceWoop 25 is available with either 6S compatible or 4S compatible motors. I've got the 6S compatible motors and it also has a bigger brother, the RaceWoop 30, which features a very similar design and bigger motors. The most unique feature of the RaceWoop 25, which separates it from other quadcopters, is of course its design, which has been heavily tested by Frizzillian before releasing it together with AGLRC. It features a pusher style configuration and its frame is based on two carbon fiber plates and a single print of very durable PCTP ducts which makes this quadcopter almost crash resistant. As for its electronic components, it features the AGLRC Aelus 2004 motors, the 6S version, which is the one I'm testing, is bundled with the 3000 kV motors and the 4S version with the 3600 kV motors. On the center of the frame, well protected between the two carbon fiber plates and 3D printed ducts, you can find the AGLRC Zeus F728 20x20mm 20 20 stack, which is based on the 28A Bill LAS 4-in-1 ESC and an F7 flight controller. The Zeus Nano VTX is mounted on the top of the stack, and since you can't access the micro USB connector of the flight controller without disassembling the frame, a micro USB to USB Type-C extender is pre-connected to the flight controller and secured to the top plate. In addition, it is using an XT30 battery connector, and the battery is mounted on the top plate. On its front side, you can find the Cadex Rotel 2 FPV camera, which is secured inside a 3D printed TPU mount which integrates an action camera mount and on its backside the mini version of the AGLRC Hammer RCP antenna which is secured inside a 3D printed mount as well which also secures the antennas of the radio receiver. As for its weight, due to the massive ducts, the Racebook 25 is not a light quadcopter Without a battery, it weighs 244.2 grams and including a 6S 850 mAh battery, which is, according to my experience, works best with this setup, the total weight is about 396 grams. In addition, the wheelbase of the frame is 123 mm and it features a true X pattern. The thickness of the bottom and top plates is 2 mm. The distance between them is 24.3 mm, and that's the reason the digital versions of both RaceBook 25 and RaceBook 30 are using the Zeus 35 all in one flight controller as the Vista unit is mounted on top of it. Now, after this quick introduction, the next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the RaceBook 25. I've tested it first of all using forest batteries just because I was curious how it's going to perform. And since the motors were underpowered and the flight time was pretty short, I don't recommend using forest batteries and I recommend to stick to 6S batteries. Even if you are going to go with the forest version, I would still recommend to use 6S batteries and limit the motor's output to around 80 or 90% 
because the KV rating of the 4S version is just slightly higher than the 6S version. As for durability, which is the key feature of this quadcopter, I can tell you that I crashed it a couple of times and it just bounced off. I don't think that these 3D prints are going to break easily, so I would definitely recommend this quadcopter to beginners because it's going to serve as a great testing platform. Just keep in mind that in case one of the prints is going to break, you will need to replace the 3D print entirely as it is made out of a single piece. One more thing that I would like you to note is that you should be careful when pressing the bind button of the ready receiver because everything is pretty tight inside and when moving it around I broke one of the antenna connectors of the Sky XM Plus receiver so simply be careful and it shouldn't happen to you. As for fly time, you can expect between 3 to 5 minutes using the 6S 850 mAh battery which I've previously recommended. You can mount an action camera on top of it and it can serve as a pretty good cinematic platform since this is a very stable quadcopter, but I would recommend to stick to light action cameras because I don't think that it's going to like the extra weight of a full-sized GoPro which is definitely going to damage its flight capabilities. So overall, in my opinion, AJLRC and Frizillion got themselves a winner, since this is one of my favorite quadcopters to date, and I would definitely recommend it to both beginner and advanced pilots. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.